But for the Jews, expelled from this land over the centuries by invaders, its spiritual legacy is one they've never relinquished. The land of Israel occupies a very important part in the liturgy and thought of Judaism and has down the ages, so that there is a very real and intimate connection between Judaism and the land of Israel, quite apart from the physical presence of Jews in the Holy Land throughout the ages. Jews are persecuted for centuries in Europe. The pogroms, or massacres, of the late 19th century lead many to believe they will only be safe in their own state. This belief becomes a political movement called Zionism. The Zionists that said there is no way that we will be able to overcome all the hurdles and the obstacles and the hardships of achieving it if it's not in the only place where the uh, uh, mental resources or emotional resources will be activated and it is the land of Israel, uh, namely what was Palestine. Over a hundred years ago, the Jewish people began their long migration back to Palestine. Then, the biggest war the world has ever seen, the First World War in 1914, means that the Jews are to come closer to a homeland. The British want allies in the Middle East. The Arabs are fighting the Turkish Ottomans for independence, and the British back them. British ally Russia is losing the will to continue, and believing the Jews could influence the Russians, the British back Jewish claims for a homeland. The Arabs and the Zionists felt more and more that conflicting promises had been made to each of them, promising Palestine. After the war, the Germans are defeated. The Middle East is divided between the British and the French. Palestine is now governed by Britain. Their fateful decision in 1919 to adopt the Jewish claim for a homeland as official policy is to affect the Holy Land from that moment on. The British mandate was designed specifically to bring about the creation of a national home for the Jews, which ultimately meant a state, with no similar commitment to self-government or independence or statehood for the indigenous inhabitants, in other words, the Palestinian Arabs. Encouraged by the attitude of the British, 35,000 Jews emigrate to Palestine over the next four years. Palestinian unease about the influx leads to riots against the Jews and the British, culminating in the three-year Arab revolt of 1936. The Palestinians are crushed by the British and their leadership destroyed. The Jews continue to arrive, although the British start limiting numbers. The end of the Second World War makes the question of a recognized homeland a priority. Six million Jews are exterminated in the Nazi death camps during the Holocaust, and the survivors are determined that it will never happen again. With no safe haven in Europe, because countries turn them away, they look to the land of Palestine, a land the Jewish Bible, the Torah, calls Israel. But the Palestinian Arabs don't want any more Jews immigrating, and to keep the peace, the British limit the influx, turning boatloads away. Horrified by the British attitude and fearful that they might lose their claim to a homeland, some Zionists turn to terrorism. But as these early pictures show, the British got tough. At the beginning, we trusted the British that they were going to give us the homeland for the Jews. And slowly by slowly, the British started to retreat from the mandate. And I decided, and the only way is that I've got to fight to free my country. But the Arabs aren't going to concede their country and also start fighting. 